All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Score. Sorry I wasn't able to do a video today. I'm still working on that video updating y'all on a lot of the top 30 visits that we're having and like different position groups like linebacker, corner, tight end, and things like that. I got y'all probably tomorrow on that one. But today, we're here to talk more quarterback. I know some people are probably tired of it, but there's so much going on with this quarterback stuff. I feel like I have to at least address it. First of all, most importantly, the thing that we're going to address in this video is how Adam Schefter was on my boy Let Maul Tell It's podcast, the Trap or Dive podcast. I have that linked in everything. He went on there and literally said the Washington Commanders fans should go ahead and buy Jaden Daniels jerseys. We're going to dive into all of that. Of course, we're going to talk about the fact that Colin Cowherd basically said the same thing as well a few days ago. Then we have Brian Kelly. Jaden Daniels is head coach back at college at LSU. He doubled down on something that he said from a week ago. Jaden Daniels claiming that he runs a 4-2-5. And then at the end, we're going to have some more survey results from Washington Commanders fans on what quarterback they prefer at the number two overall pick. We're going to dive into all that and more. But before we do, make sure you still follow that like button, still follow the subscription button, still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you follow the TikTok, the Instagram, the Twitter, the Facebook, everywhere, because I'm even posting things on there that I don't necessarily even post on the YouTube page. So make sure you stay tuned, follow all of those places. And of course, I will be live streaming rounds one through five of the NFL draft per usual. Make sure you pull up. And then of course, with us having the second overall pick and the Patriots having the third overall pick, you already know who's pulling up to do the round one live stream with me. So make sure y'all stay tuned for that. Pull up, I already have those scheduled. So you can go on my channel right now go to the live stream section and go ahead and set reminders for all of those different streams for the different days and let's go ahead and get into this video man let's get it Adam Adam All right, so first of all, shouts out to my dog over there. Let Maul tell it. Make sure you follow him on Twitter, YouTube, everywhere. I've already been shouting him out in other videos, but now I feel like it's super deserved because just the fact that he even got this interview with the Adam Schefter, that's monumental. Because I'm sure that if anybody's extremely busy right now during draft season, even more than I am, it's Adam Schefter, especially with the draft only 12 days away that's big time for them to get that interview that's super huge if you don't already follow them on twitter and youtube and everywhere else that they're available you're really lacking because let Maltella tell it already does film sessions and things like that you're missing out on great content and then not only to get adam Schefter on the show but then to get a big time quote like this is monumental he said on their show when talking about the draft of course i'm talking about the commanders Adam Schefter literally said, quote, good luck to your commanders in the draft as well. He said, I think you can go ahead and get those Jaden Daniels jerseys, unquote. And I'm not going to post the clip in my video because I want y'all to literally go to at Trap or Dive podcast, link in the description of this video and everything to go watch it for yourselves. I don't want to take any of their views or anything like that. So make sure you go not only check out that video, but make sure you subscribe before you leave as well. Tell them I sent you. But this is crazy because this is Adam Schefter tripling down on Jaden Daniels going to the Washington Commanders within just two weeks. Like, remember, he said that we can pencil in Jaden to Washington two weeks ago just as much as we can pencil in Caleb Williams to Chicago. Now, he didn't necessarily say put it in permanent marker, permanent Sharpie, anything like that. Put it in pen. He said pencil it in, but he compared it to basically the only thing just as obvious as Jaden Daniels going to Washington is Caleb Williams going to the Chicago Bears. And then after that, he was pretty much insinuating that's when the draft starts with the Patriots at three. And that's it. We already know who the first two picks are going to be. And then the draft really starts with the third pick. And then last week, he doubled down on that in his podcast and basically reassured that, yeah, I still have Jaden Daniels going to the Washington Commanders. Now, just as of, what was it, yesterday, a couple of days ago, he is telling Commanders fans to go ahead and buy Jaden Daniels jerseys. And so what's his logic behind this choice? Because, of course, 
He's saying this based off of what he's hearing from inside sources, people that he can trust, I guess. Remember, this is the same guy that predicted that Ben Johnson would not go to the Commanders and Dan Quinn would not go to the Seattle Seahawks when most people felt that it was pretty obvious that they were. He was one of the very few people coming out here and telling people, no, wait up, because that's not actually what you think is going to happen. That That's not going to happen. So even just beyond his sources, he also has a certain logic to it because he said, quote, one of the advantages I have is to get to talk to a lot of teams. And it seems like the prevailing sentiment is that Jaden Daniels is the second best quarterback. So not only does he feel like that Jaden Daniels will end up going to the Washington Commanders because that's who we prefer. He's also hearing from a lot of sources in the NFL, NFL executives, scouts and things like that, that Jaden Daniels is just flat out the second best quarterback in the draft point blank period and it just makes too much sense for the Washington Commanders to get him just because with the number two overall pick you should get the second best quarterback so that's his logic behind the whole thing and then you have the Brian Kelly situation him doubling down on what he said and what's crazy is that Brian Kelly had Commanders Twitter on fire after Jaden Daniels's pro day when he said that Jaden Daniels would do well in Washington but that ended up being something that was like basically taken out of context. People didn't know it for a few days until somebody like exposed it. But the reporter specifically asked Brian Kelly about how well Jaden Daniels would do in Washington. That's why Brian Kelly mentioned Washington. So it's not like Brian Kelly just brought up Washington out of nowhere, like he accidentally slipped up and was giving us an inside source and maybe he already knew Jaden Daniels was going to be drafted by Jaden Daniels or anything like that. So that's different. This time, though, he was asked straight up, where does he think that Jaden Daniels will end up going? And he acknowledged that both the Commanders and the Patriots are both great landing spots for him. Of course, being his ex-head coach from college from LSU when he just won the Heisman and everything, that he's going to say that Jaden Daniels will be a great fit everywhere. You expect him to say that. But then at the end of his answer, he said, quote, if you're really pushing me on this, I think he goes number two, unquote. So then you also have Brian Kelly back in the fact that Jaden Daniels will go second overall to the Washington Commanders. And then I know this is from a minute ago, but I just felt like this was the perfect time to report. I wasn't just going to do a whole separate video on this by itself, just isolated. So that's why I just kind of put it to the side. And if more Jaden Daniels information came out, then I would include that in the, in the, the next video that I've covered Jaden Daniels. So I felt like this was the perfect time to bring this up. Remember, a few days ago, really almost like a week ago, Colin Cowherd said that he's literally been told that the commanders will be drafting Jaden Daniels. Now, of course... I'm not even necessarily sure if the commanders know that they're going to end up who they're going to end up taking at number two overall. We still have the meetings with the prospects. Again, I already told you that we have like a private workout with JJ McCarthy Monday. Then Jaden Daniels comes in for his top 30 pro visit on Tuesday. And then Drake May is Wednesday, literally the deadline, the last day that you can have top 30 visits with any potential draft prospects. So we haven't even had like the real top 30 visits. I feel like film and what they did in college, like on tape and all of that is number one as far as priorities is who we're gonna take, we're gonna take them because of their film. I feel like number two is the top 30 visits. Like yeah, the, you got the pro days, you got the combine meetings, all of that is below the top 30 visits. So my point is that maybe even the commanders don't even know who they exactly want yet because we still haven't had the top 30 visits. And I feel like the only thing that outweighs the top 30 visits and who the commanders will end up deciding what to pick at number two overall is literally just the film and what they did on tape. And I guess you can throw stats in there as well. But top 30 visits play a major role. So again, I want to emphasize that maybe even the commanders have not made up their minds just yet because we haven't had the top 30 visits where they go to Ashburn. We, we have... We don't have like a limited time at the combine. You're limited to like 20 minutes for these meetings during the visit. You have the entire day. You can go out to eat. You can watch film. You can have the guy work out for you. You can do physicals. You can have your own trainers weigh Jaden Daniels to see how much he actually weighs. And if you're comfortable with that exact weight, you can do all of that type of stuff in the top 30 visit. It's just a level of access that you don't have at any other point during the draft process, which is why you're limited to only 30 of them. 30 players that you can bring in out of this entire draft process, out of the hundreds and hundreds of players that are draftable. There's a reason that they limit it to only 30 guys. So this is really important. But still, Callan Kerhurd said exactly in his quote, all right, I have been told the Washington Commanders right now, as of today, would choose Jaden Daniels, LSU quarterback, as their top pick. I'm told they believe he's more consistent than Drake May. I mean, 
I feel like even if you are a Drake May fan, you do have to admit that Jaden Daniels is at the very least more consistent. The argument is, is that Jaden Daniels typically like the general consensus, Jaden Daniels is the higher floor, Drake May is the higher ceiling. Even though, I mean, I feel like it's more complicated than that. I wouldn't say it's nowhere near that cut and dry at all, but I feel like even Drake May fans can agree that Jaden Daniels comes in with a at least more consistent throwing. And then the, the quote continues on saying he is quicker, more mobile than Drake May. And offensive coordinator Cliff Kingsbury, who will have some say in this, has had multiple quarterbacks in his college and pro coaching career that play just like him. Quarterbacks like Jaden Daniels are important. They are very hyper mobile, and that matters a lot. Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray, Lamar Jackson, as you're trying to figure out the sophisticated NFL pocket and all it asks, it gives you a couple of years to pick up first downs and move the sticks with your feet. Even Patrick Mahomes acknowledged the light didn't truly go on until year three. But the ability to move, Washington has a bad offensive line. Pick up first downs with those feet as you're learning the game is important, unquote. And that's a really good, interesting point as far as like Jaden Daniels being so mobile, why that could help raise his floor. That's a great way to word it. And again, I want to emphasize the fact that, again, we have not had a top 30 visit with these top quarterbacks yet. And on top of that, it's a great point that Colin Carr heard is bringing up that when he says, as of today, he feels like Jaden Daniels is the pick. We do not know what will happen after Wednesday. After, again, Jaden Daniels is Tuesday, Drake May is Wednesday. Maybe after Wednesday, things change. But as of today, Colin Carr heard is emphasizing today he has Jaden Daniels going to the Washington Commanders. But he says that because he knows that things can change. Who knows? And then moving on, apparently the Patriots prefer Jaden Daniels as well. So there's a report coming from Los Talks Pat. So I'm guessing this is a Pat's reporter, media specialist, media analyst, beat reporter, whatever. He tweeted, Daniel Jeremiah shared an interesting theory that was presented to him regarding the Patriots preferring Jaden Daniels over Drake May. The quote goes, one of the things that was brought up to me was, if you look at Elliot Wolf in Cleveland, 2018, he was there as an assistant GM. They had in that class, Sam Darnold, Josh Allen, Baker Mayfield, all of those guys. They chose Baker, number one overall pick when most people didn't expect it. There was this smoke similar to this Jaden Daniels situation. There was this smoke getting closer to the draft that Baker Mayfield would go number one overall. And a lot of people dismissed it, including me. I was like, nah, there's no way. I mean, I know Baker Mayfield was a great college quarterback, but do we see him as a great NFL quarterback? Strong parallels to Jaden Daniels. The smoke started picking up and then it actually happened when a lot of people and get including me were just dismissing it as just lion season type of stuff and then they went ahead and took baker mayfield and basically daniel jeremiah is saying that elliot wolf who was there in cleveland when they did that may do the same thing well may prefer to at least want to do the same thing for the patriots this time around and then the tweet goes on to continue to say the idea was if you didn't love josh allen and you chose baker over him you're not gonna be a drake may team and so and, and that's another point like if you chose baker mayfield the more day one ready over the josh allen the proposed higher ceiling that's another logic as to why maybe the patriots would prefer a Jaden daniels type of guy but I feel like even if you're comparing rosters, I feel like outside of quarterback, the commanders are better than the Patriots right now. So I feel like if anybody would prefer a win now quarterback is maybe us over the Patriots because right now the Patriots have a lot more holes to fill. We have a lot of position groups that we need to upgrade, but I feel like the only dire holes that we need, like severe needs or left tackle and quarterback, that's it. Outside of that, everything else through the draft, I feel like we're just going to be adding upgrades and upgrades and upgrades, but we, at least we have serviceable starters across the board whereas the Patriots I mean they just have straight up holes across the board so I feel like if any team would prefer to maybe be like you know what we, we can take our time with a Drake May until he realizes the ceiling we're not trying to win right now anyway I feel like it would be the Patriots but Daniel Jeremiah is saying that the Patriots probably prefer Jaden Daniels as well even though they're not in a win now mode neither are we but apparently it seems like from all of these reports that teams prefer the more win now quarterback and so continuing with the tweet, okay, if Jaden Daniels was there at three, the thought was, okay, New England takes Jaden. If Jaden Daniels goes two, now all of a sudden pick three, we might be open for business and be ready to trade back. Really interesting. Jeremiah also mentions that the Giants and Vikings are the most commonly mentioned trade back teams for New England, who also adds that he has heard that JJ McCarthy could realistically be in play for them. So it sounds like if Jaden Daniels is gone, we take him at two. The Patriots clearly prefer him and... 
they'll just go ahead and trade back. If Drake Bay's there at three, they're going to trade back. If Jaden Daniels is there at three, they'll take Jaden Daniels. And they may just prefer to trade back to where the Giants or Vikings are picking and then hope that they can get J.J. McCarthy there. Really interesting right there, man. And so some people are saying that if the Patriots really do prefer Jaden Daniels over Drake made that much, it may be safe for the commander's point of view. We're kind of good on both. Kind of like me. I prefer Jaden Daniels, but I'm happy with both of the commanders feel that exact same way where it's close enough. Maybe the commanders are closer on that than I am. I feel like I prefer Jaden Daniels enough to where I'm taking them number two. No questions asked. I'm not trading back. I'm not even risking it. But say the commanders were a little bit closer on Jaden Daniels and Drake May than even I am, maybe they could try to finesse the Patriots by trading back one pick, basically switching spots with the Patriots and still getting a top quarterback in Drake May that they could potentially love. So my boy Resh Manuel pointed out, of course, you know, it's not a video without a Resh Manuel reference in it at this point. He tweeted out, the Patriots probably feel that they absolutely need to flip spots with the commanders and Washington gets a couple of extra early day three picks, but still the guys that they really wanted, Daniels, McCarthy, or May at third overall, hard to beat that. So there was like a discussion about maybe the commanders could trade back to number three with the Patriots. The Patriots take move up to number two. They get the guy they really, really want. Maybe the commanders are just kind of neutral, kind of like we'll take either of the top guys. We'll just trade back one spot, get some additional draft picks, and still get one of the guys we really like. So there's that. But then some NFL draft analysts also came up with an even crazier trade back scenario for the commanders. And so you have at NFL Draft Bites, Chad Forbes, not a Commanders fan in the slightest. He's just a pure draft guy that covers all teams, mostly just draft players specifically. And so Sam Munson, of course, at PFF underscore Sam, he asked, what's the craziest draft scenario you like to see that you can construct a half decent argument for? And then he said, I'll give you mine. Some teams draft neighbors over Marvin Harrison Jr. Buffalo sends the Julio Jones trade packers to jump up and comes out of this draft with Marvin Harrison Jr. somehow. That would be insane, and I can see an argument for that. But then Chad Forbes said, Adam Peters does his homework. Again, this is not a Commanders fan, a Commanders reporter, no attachment to the Commanders at all. He said, again, at NFL Draft Bites, Adam Peters does his homework, knows the Patriots won't take Drake May, trades down to 11 with the Vikings who want Jaden Daniels, then comes up from 11 to 5 to get Drake May, the quarterback from UNC, the quarterback he would have wanted at number two anyway. And so that's a really interesting scenario where we trade back to the Vikings, then trade back up to number five to get Drake May. Now we have all of this additional draft capital, and we still got the quarterback that apparently maybe Adam Peters does prefer a, a Drake May over a Jaden Daniels anyway, and now he was able to get more draft picks and still get the guy he wanted. Really interesting. Also, now, even though he's a great runner, I do want to point out the fact that I believe this is just a flat out lie. Top quarterback prospect Jaden Daniels said that he will run a 4-2-5 40-yard dash. And yeah, you're fast, but you're not even Lamar Jackson fast, let alone a 4-2-5 40-yard dash. That would be the fifth all-time in NFL football history. You're not that fast, dog. And I love Jaden Daniels. Again, I prefer Jaden Daniels over Drake May, but a 4 2 5 40 yard dash, you're not that fast, dog. And you look good on tape, but you don't look that fast. I already know without you running a 40 time, you're not even as fast as Lamar Jackson. So there's just no way. I just want to go ahead and point that out that that's a flat out, even as a Jaden Daniels fan, that's a flat out lie. Don't believe that at all, just in case if some of y'all may have. And then before we get up out of here, I did want to also point out the fact that Ben Standig did a survey on Twitter at 2,104 votes, and he did a poll. The commanders round by round, I put up some options and you may take the picks. And so he did this, I believe he did several surveys, but of course the most important one, most relevant to this video is that he asked, first round, pick two, do you take quarterback or trade down for picks? And so he said, when trading down, you have multiple firsts, maybe some additional day two selections, and then you can still end up taking a quarterback like Bo Nix or Michael Penix or maybe somebody else later. And so the, the, the least voted was J.J. McCarthy at 4.8%. The third was 12.7% for trade down for more picks and maybe take a, one of those quarterbacks. And then second was Drake May at 33.3% and then Jaden Daniels won with 49.2%. So basically Jaden Daniels received almost 
50 percent of the votes himself and then drake may jj mccarthy and trey down basically shared the other 50 percent. so it sounds like commanders fans in general are more so leaning towards Jaden daniels and i feel like this has changed over the past few weeks especially the past couple of months drake may was winning in most of these surveys until like i don't know maybe now that we're seeing reporting that Jaden daniels is more than likely going to be the pick maybe some people are kind of just even if you did prefer Drake May, now you're just kind of coming into reality and just accepting that maybe it is Jaden Daniels and maybe I should just go ahead and, and get comfortable with it and maybe even prefer it before the draft even happens because it just seems like it's most destined to happen. I don't know psychologically why this is changing right now because I don't know what happened in the past couple of weeks for people to suddenly just like Jaden Daniels more than Drake May. I've been saying for months now, I love them both, but I prefer Jaden Daniels. I don't know why they're just the fan base in general is starting to lean more towards Jaden Daniels. Who knows exactly? Again, maybe it's just like a psychological thing. Maybe it's just accepting the fact that this is reality. So now I'm just going to talk myself into it. Who knows? But either way, that's really interesting. Now Jaden Daniels is 50%. Drake May is 33%. And then you got trade back on JJ McCarthy in there as well. So not only does Adam Schefter believe and almost assume that Jaden Daniels will be the pick, not only does Callum Cowherd think that Jaden Daniels will be the pick, Brian Kelly, his head coach, all these different resources everywhere. And again, I talked about in my previous video how there are some people that are even Drake May fans that prefer Drake May. Some of these guys prefer Drake May even more than Caleb Williams. And they even feel like Jaden Daniels is more than likely going to be the pick at second overall. But now even on top of that, Commanders fans are starting to vote more towards Jaden Daniels as well. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please stiff arm that like button. Stiff arm the subscription button. Stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time. I released an informative and opinionated video just like this one. I really appreciate y'all. Again, stay patient with me. I've been able to put out content as much as I want to, but I promise y'all the slightly over a week, at least a week leading up to the draft, I'm about to be hitting y'all with like two, three videos a day, film sessions, all kinds of stuff. So make sure you stay tuned. It's super up as soon as I'm back home, straight content. Again, two, three videos a day type of stuff. Make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you go follow all of the other social medias. Make sure you stay tuned. If you're not a channel member, go become one because when I do my film sessions, channel members will get the full long, like hour long unedited versions of these film sessions. Everybody else will get like a quick little 10 minute, couple of weaknesses, couple of strengths, that's it. But y'all will get like all of the comedy, all of the mistakes because when I'm watching film sessions, I'm out here making jokes. I may even join like just the way somebody shook somebody out of their socks. Like I'm all of that stuff. Stuff, you'll get all of that if you're a channel member and of course if you're a channel member I'm not gonna have ads in those videos because you're already paying to support the channel so those will be free as well so if you're a channel member so make sure you stay tuned for all of that I really appreciate y'all catch y'all later with more content I'm out